Brian Steele held in contempt. That's Young Thug's lawyer held in contempt by the judge who, when Brian Steele brought it up in court to say, hey, I have information that you guys had an improper meeting in private that was about, uh, that was with a witness that we weren't privy to or we weren't there, we couldn't object it, and that was improper. And, and the judge said, fuck what you're talking about improper. Who told you? Yeah. <laughs> snitch on the snitch. Right. And he said no. And the judge says you're going to be spending 20 days in county jail. What do you think about Brian Steele and, and how does being a lawyer like that work? Because a lot of people are wondering, what's that type of relationship with a client? So a couple of things I think about Brian Steele, his, his status as a lawyer, his relationship with his client. First, Brian Steele has been at the top of the criminal defense law game for 20, 30 years. Um, he has consistently proven himself in trial, in plea bargaining, in appeals. And he has a long record of cases that he's beat at trial, cases that he's gotten dismissed without a trial, and cases that he's lost, gone up on appeal, and beat them on appeal. Mm. His criminal record is unmatched. You put it up with any criminal defense attorney across the country. Okay. His relationship with his client is a very interesting one. Because if you're that lawyer and you have that reputation, you're not going to associate yourself with just any defendant. And in my heart of hearts, I believe truly that if Brian Steele felt that Young Thug was anything close to the King's slime that that indictment tries to make him out to be, I don't think he'd represent him in the manner, in the, the zealous passion that he's doing. So for that, um, you know, Brian Steele is just beyond question. There's nothing you could question that man. The, the track record, the history of showing up with his Do you think it's the money, it. though? Like, like, so, so I instantly think maybe Young Thug is saying, hey, listen, $10 million, you got it. Get me out of this. Would the money make him? Because I remember the very first time when Young Thug got arrested, and I think they were about to get to the bail hearing or so, and, and Brian Steele had this epic interview. He says, we're going to fight this charge yeah. with every yeah. ounce of blood in my body. And I'm like, yo, if I ever have a lawyer... I need him to talk like that. That is great. Like he he was always on that type of time. Is he doing this because of course Young Thug is going to compensate him very handsomely? I, I assume, or is it because hey, I have a relationship with you and I know that this is bullshit? Well, it's both. It's both. They're both um, necessary. You know, one what one without the other. The money's got to be there, and the relationship's got to be there for you to get the Brian Steele that you're getting in court. If you're Jeffrey Williams. All right. You got to you got to be a stand up, decent human being, I believe. And I believe you got to be paying him serious, serious paper. Yeah. All right. So that's where Brian Steele's at. The contempt order. All that starts on what was day 87 of the trial Friday that just passed. OK, break that down for me, because uh, to, to everybody else that watch, what we see the clips on Instagram. A lot of people aren't watching every single day or they're not even understanding the context. So some of the clips are seen what happened and, and give us your take. So everything starts on day 87, right? This past Friday, you got Kenneth Copeland, the state's quote unquote star witness. Mm. All right. So this guy gets up there. He takes the stand. And then there's a question of whether or not he's going to testify or plead the fifth. OK, I, I had to cut you off, but I'm, I'm trying to add some context to it. So we've seen this guy, YSL Woody, before. There was a leaked interrogation footage of him talking for three hours. Everyone knew that. If Gunner wasn't the, the, the quote unquote snitch, this guy was definitely going to tell. He told three hours in interrogation room. You obviously know a lot more about the, the, the legal proceeding. This guy, I can imagine his family's getting threats. He was going to be the star witness. What do you think has happened before? And then, um, because I, I don't even think, we haven't seen this guy on social media at all really much. But he did show up to supposedly testify. I could tell you what was happening before. So... The state subpoenaed him two weeks ago. Mm. All right. And then he was supposed to testify last Tuesday. But because of the trial schedule, or whatever, he's not going to go on on Tuesday. All right. So then he's scheduled for Friday. And this whole time from two weeks to that Friday, the prosecutor is talking to Woody. They're talking to him like, yeah, we're going to ask you these questions. We're going to show you this evidence. You're good. You're good. 
Very buddy buddy cozy relationship. Is he in cahoots with them saying, "Hey, I'm gonna take"? Because we're gonna get into that. Because I hate when I see these guys get on the understand and they're half snitching. They're like, "I'm telling, but I'm not really telling." I'll say certain stuff, but not certain stuff. Like, hey, what's the agreement here? So all bef before he gets on that stand, you're saying the prosecutor is talking to him. Is he saying to them, fuck you, I'm not going to cooperate? Well, according to the prosecutor, he's being cooperative. He's talking to them. He's doing whatever they're asking him to do for mm. the two weeks up until the Friday. Okay. Except that on Thursday night, the night before he's supposed to testify, an email is sent from the lawyer for Kenneth Copeland, Woody, to the prosecutor. Really? My client's not going to testify. He's pleading the fifth. <laughs> no way. Now, this is problematic, according to Woody's lawyer at the time, a guy named Melnick. Because Melnick says that they've known this whole time that I'm his lawyer. And they should have never been talking to him at all. I shouldn't have had to come to the night before I'm telling them that he's pleading the fifth after they've had all these conversations with him. But anyway, that happens. All The, the lawyer sends an email. He's going to plead the fifth. You can call them if you want, whatever. So they go to court. Could you explain what pleading the fifth, just for the people who might just not know? So the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution says that you have the right to remain silent, to not incriminate yourself, that you cannot be forced to speak on things that would subject you to criminal liability for your own conduct. Okay. That's why they give you the Miranda warning. Anything you say can and will be used against you, but you have the right to remain silent. And so Woody says that I'm exercising my Fifth Amendment right. I will not testify. And this causes a big problem for the prosecution. Okay, it should not cause any type of problem for the judge because the judge is, doesn't care, right? The judge is a neutral arbiter of the case. It's really just the prosecution's problem. Their witness is not going to testify. So the prosecution had told Woody that, look, if you plead the Fifth, you will face consequences. And that... You, Why would that be if, if that's his right? Well, and, and, and here's where all the law comes into play. So there's a law in Georgia that says that if you have material testimony to a case and the government wants you to come testify, then the government can give you something called use immunity, mm. meaning that anything you say won't be used against you. Right? Okay. The Miranda warning is anything you say can and will be will used be. against you. Okay, okay, okay. All okay. right? Now they're saying that, look, we need your testimony, and we understand you have a Fifth Amendment right, and you're invoking it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you this nice little piece of paper that says anything you say to us, we will not use against you.